You say, well, Pastor Burzins, we're in New Testament church. Why are we in Leviticus 18? Isn't Leviticus about the law? Yeah, it is. And that's exactly what we're going into this morning is the law. And we're going in specific aspects of the law that people want to ignore or pretend doesn't exist. But they're there and they're in the word of God. And, and I'm going to cover, I'm going to try to answer a few objections that are very common that I hear about even going into this subject and why do you talk about this and everything else and, and well, what is the law for and who is it to and every, you know, we're going we're gonna to dig into that a little bit because I want to I be reasonable here and I want, you to, I want people to think about this and think about it in a way that makes sense and I don't want you just to accept and say, well, that's just what pastor said. No, it's not a good enough reason. You're going to believe something to be true, believe it, because you know it's true, because it all makes sense, because it fits with what Scripture is teaching. New Testament, Romans 6, the Bible says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Here's one example in the New Testament that's telling us and commanding us not to sin. So the first objection, even just to going to the law, people say, well, the law is just gone. The law is done away with, right? Why would you even go to the law? We're New Testament believers. The law doesn't apply. Blah, 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 right, right? Okay, well, the Bible's saying not to sin. If we're not, you know, if we're commanded not to sin, how can we not sin unless we know about the law. Look down in 1 John chapter 3, verse number 4. The Bible says, Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. New Testament definition of sin. You are transgressing God's law. Obviously, what I quoted you in Romans 6, is found in many places in the New Testament. I will not belabor that point. Read the Bible one time. Read the New Testament one time and count how many times you're admonished not to sin. Okay, and if sin is a transgression of the law, in order for us not to sin, let's look at the law. The law of the Lord is good. The law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul. Now, the reason why people get confused is because there are different applications of the law. If we're looking to the law for our salvation, then you're looking in the wrong place. We are not looking to keep the law in order to be saved. So the verses that talk about the law being done away and, and not being under the curse of the law and being free from that bondage and everything else is referring to our path of salvation, of ultimately being reconciled to God because we can't be reconciled to God through the law because we've already transgressed the law we've already sinned we need jesus christ and it's only as a free gift it's only by grace it's only by faith in him that saves us so when we go as believers as christians to look to the law it is not for our atonement it is not for the salvation of our souls and again when you read those verses in the New Testament that people like to twist and, and, and take way too far to an extreme of like these hyper grace people who say, well, there's just no more law. Well, that doesn't line up with what the scripture is talking about then. If there is no law at all, then how could we sin? How could anybody sin for that matter? If there's no law in the New Testament, then nobody's a sinner. Because sin is the transgression of the law. It makes no sense. We have to be reasonable and look to and use our understanding and the brains that God gave us to be able to reason through these things and understand what God is trying to tell us and how we should be living according to his words, right? Without contradiction. 